since I moved here with a little bit of money and um, one family member who was wonderful enough to put me up for six months. And then I got my studio and I was able to thrive because I believe in living below your means. And that's why I'm not flashy on the Instagram and the social media. It just doesn't speak towards my poor white trash nature. <laughs> and um, I, the pandemic happened. And I had the freedom because I the whole time Mm -hmm. uh, from 17 years old and upwards. I and I loved it. I got into it for probably the wrong reasons, but I stayed in it because it spoke to me on a spiritual level and it fueled me creatively. How so? That's such an interesting take. Um, So I got into it, I think, for that sort of because I was always growing up like very asexual in perception the way people looked at me they didn't think I literally had someone in the sixth grade tell me I don't think of you as a boy I don't think of you as a girl I just think of you as you Mm -hmm. and I said well that's rude but (laughs) that's sort of the consensus is on how a lot of people viewed me so I was sort of reclaiming my sexuality at 17 and really figuring out myself in a lot of ways and escorting sort of gave me this power that I didn't know I had and made me feel uh, perceived correctly Mm -hmm. as a erotic um, entity as a as more than just uh, something aesthetically pleasing but as something to be coveted Mm -hmm. and I, I enjoyed that after evolving, I learned that's not the best reason to get into sex work. You should get into sex work because of X, Y, Z reasons that are more for you. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, escorting is not something I get to do often because of my current place in the industry. And it's uh, just not facilitatable for different reasons. But um, it always brought me so much joy because I was and this is the big juxtaposition between porn and escorting with porn there's so much false narratives and so much like faking it and and putting on a show with escorting my client was always there because they were so enamored and so excited and Mm. genuinely looking forward to being with me and turned on by me that that would in turn turn me on. Yeah. And then I have this person who's not conventionally attractive. I can count probably on one hand how many aesthetically pleasing clients I've had in my mm-hmm. life, but that's not why I do it. I do it because they're so into it. Mm-hmm. That gets me into it. And now we have this symbiotic exchange where I'm having a genuine sexual experience That is gratifying for me because I know that they're getting something out of it and I'm getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it would just give me so much dopamine and I would come out of it just feeling so creatively charged because I'm like, what am I going to do with this energy now? I'm going to go paint. Like it would just be so like fuel for me. And it brought me so much joy that not only was I able to give someone a genuine experience. I always considered myself a happiness consultant. And I liked having um, married clients because I felt that they were, a lot of the time, it would be like 15 minutes of sex and then the rest would just be chat. I hear that from almost every girl who escorts. Who enjoys it. Yeah. It's and like, it's mostly, it's, it's just so people who great. want companionship. People who just want someone to be there for them. Yeah. And we would be able to talk, uh, my regulars leading right up until I, kind of had to take a back seat from escorting. They were all married and we would talk about their marriages and how they met their partner and how happy and the da, 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 da. And then, well, I'm trying to think about this and I want to do this and she's not cool with this. And we would get to like extrapolate on that and we would get to figure out, you know, solutions and just decompress together. And it would be so illuminating that I feel like they would go home to their wife and be so appreciative of what they have at home Mm -hmm. because I pose no threat to their wife. If anything, wouldn't you rather have your husband having sex with a prostitute, someone who's getting tested every two weeks as opposed to their secretary? Oh my God, a hundred percent. And it's funny. They're going to have an emotional infidelitous relationship. I've literally said, (laughs) 
I said this to my husband, who's a very normal guy, who's like, you know, we have a very like standard relationship, yeah. like great relationship. Like, but I've said this to him, I'm like, babe, you know, if you ever want to have sex with somebody else, like, I understand. I'm like, I would just prefer it be a sex worker so that I know it's like oh, a transactional relationship. Yes. And I'm like, and I could even help you find somebody that I trust. And he just looks at me, he's like, you're Ooh, out of your goddamn you mind. You are the one. No, but you know what he says to me? He goes, why don't you just give me blowjobs more often, babe? He's like, I don't want to fuck anybody hey, else. communication. And I was like, okay, fine. Wow. You know what? All right. That's communication. But it was like, yeah. Healthy. I mean, that's like, I, you know, and I've said this to him a couple, and he always looks at me like I'm insane. He's like, I don't want to be with anybody else. I'm like, but you never change your mind. Like, just know there. that door is open. Oh, I'm open fabulous. to that discussion. Yeah. But like, let's, you know, like, let's, let's do this in a way that I'm comfortable with. Fuck yeah. Boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries. I've been the third so many times. Everyone's fucking looking for a goddamn unicorn. <laughs> and uh, it's so just baffling all these poor, a lot of the time, women who feel pressured to do these three ways because they want to make their man happy. And it's like, dude, this is not healthy communication. Yeah. You're here and it's not fun for us. And because I'll be, I'm a facilitator. Mm -hmm. I'll be all up in it. I'm making sure she's taken care of. We're focusing on her. We're doing the, you're up there and I'm down here. I'm on duty. All right. You need to switch places. Let's do it. I love it. Ooh, you feel good. <laughs> you know, like I want to make sure everyone's having a good time. Yeah. Second, he touches me in any sort of way, mood shift. Mm. And I'm like, dude, this is what I was trying to avoid. Why'd yeah. you gotta, why'd you ruin everything? Yeah. You know? Come on, guy. You know, you already got what you wanted out of the situation. Now she's uncomfortable. Now I'm in the middle. <sighs> that is awkward. It's so annoying. Just like be a fucking grown up. Watch porn together first and go from there. Yeah. I mean, that's the first step. Yeah. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.